Welcome to Rachel and Rita's video tour of the ear. Today we are going to talk about hearing and the ear. The ear is split into three different sections, the inner, the middle, and the outer. Let's start with the outer ear. The outer ear helps us localize sounds, specifically high frequency sounds, and capture the sounds through the auricle or the pinna and down into the middle ear. Let's start on the outside. First, we have the helix, which is the outermost part of the ear. Next, we have the scaphoid fossa, the crua of the antihelix, the triangular fossa, the simba concha, the tragus, which would typically be located around this area, the intertragal notch, the antitragus, the earlobe, the cavum concha, and then the external auditory meatus, or the EAM. Some physiology of the outer ear includes it can funnel sound um, up to about 3,000 hertz. It is filled with cerumen, which is also your ear wax, and it um, is produced in the outer one-third of the outer ear, and it helps keep your ear warm, and it protects from dirt and insects. When sound is captured by the auricle, the next step is it is funneled down the EAM, which consists of the cartilaginous portion, which makes up the lateral one-third, and the bony portion, which makes up the medial two-third. Once sound is filtered down the EAM, it hits the eardrum, otherwise known as the tympanic membrane. Let's take a look behind the tympanic membrane. Here, we have three tiny bones known as ossicles. The ossicles include the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. The malleus attaches to the tympanic membrane via the lateral process of the manubrium, and the stapes attaches to the oval window. Now we're going to talk about the middle ear as six walls or six different cavities like a cube. Let's talk about some of the landmarks on this cube. On the superior wall of the middle ear, we have the tegmen tympani. On the inferior wall, we have the jugular vein. On the medial wall, we have the oval window. The oval window contains the footplate of the stapes. It's a small membrane allowing the footplate access to the inner ear fluids to stimulate motion. We also have the round window down here, which is the membrane with access to the basal turn of the scala tympani of the cochlea. We also have the promontory and the prominence of the facial cranial nerve and the prominence of the lateral semicircular canal. On the posterior or mastoid wall, we have the tympanic additus, which is the entrance to the tympanic atrium. We have the pyramidal eminence, right here, which is behind the oval window near the prominence of the facial cranial nerve. The eminence houses the stapedius muscle. We also have the fossa incidus and the corda tympani nerve, which passes through the junction of the posterior and lateral wall. On the anterior wall, there is a thin sheet of bone that separates this wall of the middle of the ear from the carotid canal. We have the canal of the tensor tympani, and we have the entrance for the eustachian tube. The lateral wall, which is invisible, it would be on the front of this, contains the tympanic membrane. The physiology of the middle ear is quite complicated. It can funnel sound between 8,000 and 1,500 hertz. It is an impedance matching system, which means that it transfers acoustic energy into mechanical energy, which then hits the obstacles and sends fluid throughout the rest of the ear. And it is a 17 to 1 ratio, which is the tympanic membrane to the oval window. There is a 33 decibel gain because of lever action. The eustachian tube is the end of the middle ear, and it helps remove debris and mucus and it also equalizes pressure in the ear, like when you pop your ears. 
The inner ear starts once the stapes pushes on the oval window and sends a mechanical signal to the inner ear. This energy is sent to the semicircular canals, which are the three rings here. There is a superior, posterior, and lateral semicircular canal. The outside of the semicircular canal is called the bony labyrinth, and the fluid you can see inside is called endolymph. We will learn more about the fluid in the ear later. The semicircular canals have a little bulge in them, which is called the ampulla. This is where sound is processed and then sent to the vestibule. You can't see with this model, but the vestibule is broken into two parts. The horizontal portion is called the utricle and the lateral portion is the saccule. Here is the cochlea. The orange canal is called the scala vestibuli, and that's the canal that goes upwards until it hits the apex or the helicotrema. The blue canal is the scala tympani, which is the canal that goes downwards and out the round window. The canal in the middle is called the scala media or the cochlear duct. Then that signal is sent from the top and it goes out the cochlear nerve. Let's go into more detail about the anatomy of the inner ear. One of the most important organs housed in the inner ear, more specifically the scala media or the cochlear duct, is the organ of corti. The organ of corti is the end organ of hearing. Some important landmarks are the tectorial membrane, corti's tunnel, inner hair cells, and outer hair cells. The sound starts with the fluid displacement of the scala vestibuli, causing Reisner's membrane to shift. Once Reisner's membrane moves, the signal is sent through the endolymph in the cochlear duct and all the way through to the basilar membrane. This is an example of tonotopic organization within the basilar membrane. Once the basilar membrane shifts, it causes the hair cells to move, which then cause the cilia to bend. The hair cells move like this. We're pressing against the tectorial membrane. The amount that the hair cells move causes a cochlear microphonic release. The cochlear microphonic is a measurable electrical current that is transferred to the auditory nerve fibers. The inner ear physiology includes fluid displacement in the cochlea, which involves tonotopic organization, which is when you have low frequencies and high frequencies. Here is a cochlea. The lower frequencies are heard more at the base, whereas the higher frequencies travel up and are heard more at the apex. Then we have hair cells and cilia, and they move according to the frequency in the ear. Action potential is when neurons are stimulated by their respected hair cells. And lastly, all of the information is sent through the auditory nerve. The vestibular system helps people determine where they are in space. The cerebellum part of the brain controls everything related to the vestibular system. It is a fluid-filled system that uses gravity, motion, and inertia to stimulate vestibular organs so we know where we are in space. The utricle is on a horizontal plane and the saculae is on a vertical plane. They are surrounded by paralymph and filled with endolymph. There are three ampullae and each ampullae have cristae which are the end organs of the semicircular canals. The maculae is the end organ of the utrosacular system. The endolymphatic sac is a drainage system for endolymph fluid to keep fluids drained for balance and the ductus reunions allows communication between the endolymphatic duct and the endolymphatic sac. The physiology of the vestibular system includes telling your eyeballs where to look, which is an example of vestibular ocular. There's also vestibulospinal and vestibulocerebellar. The physiology of the cristae involves head movements, which then causes fluid and canals to move and the cristae capula are deflected. They are responsible for angular acceleration. Let's do a short review of how sound is transferred to your brain. First, a sound is made and it's captured by the auricular pinna and sent down the EAM where it next hits the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane vibrates and sends a signal to the manubrium of the malleus, which then hits the incus and then the stapes. The stapes pushes on the oval window and sends a signal up to the semicircular canals, which are right here. After it's sent through the semicircular canals, it goes down and spirals up the cochlea till it hits the apex and then back down, where it's then sent off to the cochlear nerve and then off to the brain. 
This brings us to the end of our ear tour video. We hope you've enjoyed it.